Welcome back to Neyland Stadium, a place that had South Carolina head coach Lou Holtz making some noise about the noise earlier this week. Now, after losing two weeks ago at Arkansas, a place that Lou Holtz said his offense had trouble calling plays because of the crowd noise, Holtz this week said, we're going to have a chance to call our plays or we're not coming out of the huddle at Tennessee. Now, Holtz later recanted, but he did have his offense practicing indoors this week with Rocky Top playing at full strength. Now, just a few moments ago, I spoke to the referee here, Harold Mitchell, because there is a noise rule in the SEC, but it has never been utilized in eight years. I asked Mitchell what would prompt him to use the rule. He said, if by rule, it gets too noisy in here for the offense to call his plays. I also asked him if Lou Holtz has spoken to the officials before the game as promised, and he simply chuckled and said, I'm not allowed to talk about those things, Dave. That's classified. Well, Tennessee has won the toss and elected to defer. That's Alex Walls. We will kick it away to Ryan Brewer or Derek Watson. And 108,000 or so on their feet as this will come down on the seven to Brewer. And with some broken tackles, Brewer out to the 33-yard line in South Carolina and senior quarterback Phil Petty going to work from there. Three-year starter, their fourth all-time leading passer, coming up on 5,000 career yards. And the Bud starting lineup with the Gamecock backs and receivers, led by Watson and Pinnock in the backfield. Brian Scott is a terrific deep threat. Brewer may play some tailback as well. The tight ends rarely get a chance to catch a pass. And out of the gun to give to Watson. Good for seven yards around the right corner and upended there by Andre Lott. And the offensive line for the Gamecocks. Lorel Johnson at center, 305 pounder. will have his work cut off for him today when Big John Henderson lines up over his nose. Henderson, he says now fully healthy. Battling an ankle most of the year. Hainsworth healthy as well. Richmond for the still injured Will Overstreet, who may see some action with his brain new. Carolina, an early test of their style and count, and Petty keeps it inside the Tennessee 40. A lot again there for the stop, a gain of 24 yards for Phil Petty. And he's not the running quarterback. Great block back right here, coming back, keeper all the way for Petty, good trap coming back. Travell Wharton on the pull. Excellent job freeing up Petty. A couple of big runs to start the game. 24 yards is the sum total of South Carolina's rushing attack in this game last year on 29 attempts. This one stops as the give to Watson. Watson carried well by Bernard Jackson, the left defensive end of the Tennessee linebackers. As they have it all year, more with Stevenson, South Carolina product, waved the Tennessee flag proudly on their field last year, white side on the weak side. Secondary led by Jabari Greer, number 33, a corner. He's become the best DB in Orange. And after a loss of two, Betty hoping everybody sees his play call. And they set up the screen. Watson has that one read by Eddie Moore. Junior out of South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, their second leading tackler all over the screen. Eddie Moore's got man coverage here, number 37. You'll see him look as if he comes out of nowhere, but he's got the play read from the very beginning. That's his job. The little six screen attempt. Nothing doing in man coverage. Loss of seven more yards. And a third and 19. Able to get to the Tennessee 26. Coming with pressure, batted down. Now, as uh, Big Mike Dolich said, in our open, South Carolina must. 
just run the ball. They came out, Mike, they did a good job, and then it seemed like they lost their patience and started trying to throw it. Well, when you see that pass, you see what happens. Look at the quick pressure in his face. That, again, was going to be a screen, but that was going to be a middle screen. Teddy couldn't dump it off over Albert Hainsworth, who was coming straight into his face. Tyler Dean on the kick. He averaged nearly 43 yards. Trying to hang this one inside the 10, and too much on it. 45-yarder will net only 25, and Tennessee's offense for the first time with Casey Clawson, who has really come into his own the last two and a half games or so, 64% on the year, and coming off maybe his best start to finish performance as the starter bud backs and receivers stevens leads the sec third nationally 150 yards per game stallworth still playing with a soft cast on his wrist parker the other wide out but we'll see an awful lot of kelly washington who's been battling a sore foot and right to the air crossing action and drops and he goes right to his tight end jason witten who was a major weapon at Alabama last week, seven catches, including a touchdown. The Tennessee offensive line with Coleman, Weary, Wells, Herrera for the injured Jason Respert out for the year, and Will Offenhusel. Kalimba Edwards is the main man on defense, a Lombardi Trophy candidate, number 55. He's down, he's up, he's all over the field. Starts it in. You see him some of the linebackers as well. Second and ten. Dawson. Thought he had room to run. He didn't. He had John Stamper draped all over him. And now the leader with his third sack of the year for the Gamecocks. Linebacking four with Garrison, Lemon, and Harney. Rashad Faison, keep an eye on him, number 11. The five defensive backs, two of them are called Spurs. Faison and Offer are called Spurs. We'll explain it as the game goes on, but they're required to do a whole lot. They have to play like a linebacker and defensive back all day long. Faison, a man to watch. Nine stops behind the line. Best on the team, he does have from one of those Spur positions. And the play clock expires on Dawson. South Carolina on their first series has no problem getting their signals understood going with silent counts. On the offense, five-yard penalty, three third down. And Mike, we saw Kelly Clawson struggle with things like the clock against this kind of defense, both from Syracuse and Arkansas. The 3-3 three -three with the stack with Spurs and hybrid types, Kalimba Edwards. Moving in and out. Moving everywhere. Yeah. Moving everywhere makes them check a lot. And you see that play clock, it's going to be very important. You're looking at underneath the time there. It's going to play an important role in the game today. Ever since they're over on third down against Syracuse, they've made more than half. They need 15 this time and crossing out of the shotgun. Again, stepping up and again, nothing for him. Stamper with his second straight stack of Clawson. Now that's a big moment for South Carolina, bigger than you might imagine in the normal sense because the thing that Coach Holtz worries about the most with his team right now is third down. People have been able to make conversions even when they had third and very long. This time, they got the job done. Justin Colquitt has not had a good redshirt freshman season. Less than 37 yards per kick. But look at the bounce on this one. As Brewer let it fall and all the way inside the 30, and he's going to get 53 yards out of that, and that's the best kick of the year by Dustin Colquitt. Lou Holtz trying to become the first South Carolina coach to win in Knoxville. It's a day that just cries out for football. Ball colors in uh, full display in the Smokies for 8,000 on hand inside Neyland Stadium. It is very cool. It may drop, in fact, into the 20s. Yeah. Right. All right. Good ball weather from here on in. And Big ball outside. South Carolina from just inside their 30. Take the end around to Corey Alexander. Then to give to Watson. Has to fight awfully hard to pick up two. John Henderson with his first tackle. 
And when you consider that they had 29 rushes for 24 yards against Tennessee a year ago, I'm going to say this one more time. South Carolina must run this football extremely well. They came out, did that on their first series, and then got impatient when they got in Tennessee territory, and I think it cost them. They've already run it for 32 yards. They broke their record. <laughs> Second and seven, and another give to Watson. He's going to be close for the first down. Should have it, in fact, right at the 40, as Eddie Moore is on an active first few minutes, makes another tackle. I'll tell you this, too. He, Derek Watson is very close to breaking these things. He's a step away from a long run. Well, they're doing a nice job trapping the old line. Uh, that time it was Kevin Rivers in there before it was the Travell Wharton. And they're doing a nice job of giving the running back a little bit of a hole in there and getting to the linebacker before they get in touch. Three wides in the spread look for South Carolina. Worth noting that Tennessee does not feel they need to change their defensive personnel with extra wideouts in the game. Watson again. Maybe one. Quick reacting John Henderson, who sprained his ankle in the opener against Syracuse, sat out the next game against Arkansas, and has uh, slowly worked himself back to right at about 100%. He said, this is the best I've felt all year. Well, and this defense uh, in stopping the run is one of the best in the nation this year, giving up just 70 yards per game. That's seventh nationally, first in the SEC, and certainly Mr. Henderson's a big part of that. Four wides this time on second and nine. Watson. 48-yard line is where Dominique Stevenson, the three-year starter, one of the holdovers from the 98 National Championship team and the leading tackler on this year's team. And I must tell you, number 73, Laurel Johnson, the offensive center that was moved in there to be a big guy and take on John Henderson, did a great job, got a pancake, got the big man on his back. Last year, in short, they had 250-pound Scott Brown at center, clearly outmanned by Henderson. 55 more pounds to Lowell Johnson. Watson, a spin move, and another first down just across midfield. Mike, what a move. Michigan and Iowa have been tight all day. Reese Davis, how's it now? Dave Iowa with a 20 to 14 lead here, but you will never see a better catch than the one Marquise Walker makes right here. I know you can be prone to hyperbole as a sportscaster, but what do you think of that? Wolverines on top, 21-20 early in the fourth quarter. Stanford, let UCLA creep closer. That's now a 10-point game, and they're going to the fourth quarter in Tallahassee. Turks and Knowles tied at 31. We'll keep an eye on them. Upset Saturday, maybe some more coming for the down. Carolina not bothered at all so far by crowd noise. Glad you're down this time, Dad. <laughs> As you said the words. As you said it, Melvin Page got the little uh, green apple yeah, quick step there. I'll start on the offense. A five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. When, when you... And the noise is paying, uh, is going to play certainly a big part in this game. A vacuum cleaner. <laughs> you never worked one of those. I, I, I vacuum all the time, and I don't think they were that loud. Well, how about the library at 40, so the vacuum cleaner would go to 70. That's the surprising that live rock music only three times as loud as the library. Okay, that, that sounds worse. Well, that still sounds worse to me. First and 15, Andrew Kennett with his first carry. The 250 pounder slams his way to the 46. And a gain of nine. The junior from Bloomfield, Connecticut, hit in the secondary by Jabari Greer. I'm telling you, they're getting great push by this offensive line. It's something they got to absolutely be loving it right here. You're going to get the push. Everybody's moving their man. Everybody's moving their man down the line. When you have D linemen spinning like that, two yards down the field, you know you have beaten them soundly. Good start trying to pick up a first and 15. As the noise hits triple digit. Another knocker down and Petty hit behind the line. 
Uh, Watson on the give from Phil Petty. That was the right guard that time. I believe Kevin Rivers making the move. Here's what's happening. I think that Petty's getting his plays called without much trouble. Then the noise kicks up. Here's the call. Five stars on the offense. Five yard penalty. Mike, you call it. There's a false start on Rivers, the right guard, and the center is beginning to call the signals, the snap count, and the linemen are not responding well to that. That's something that's relatively new. The center is actually doing the last two hut huts. That, that's and really interesting. The ball. It is interesting. Yeah, the quarterback does the whole cadence, and then the center finishes it off. So the thought is that they won't do what they've unfortunately done. That's <laughs> Down and 11, Petty down another flag. And Petty near the line of scrimmage at the 49. Henderson there alongside Albert Hainsworth. And again, we'll hear from Harold Mitchell. Petty, this series, understandably, showing a little frustration. Skip took the offense inside the indoor practice facility and blasted Rocky Top 76 times in that hour of practice. They also practiced 20 minutes outdoors with the loudspeaker blaring. The goal was to learn to operate in silence to be able to communicate without being able to hear each other. Tough going early here, Dave. You know, that's a catchy tune and all, but I don't think I could listen to it 76 times. Oh, yes, you could. You've got to be kidding me. Buddy has to throw it away. I like to sing, and I don't want to hear myself sing anything 76 times. I and mean, we're right there with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Tennessee defense did a nice job stringing things out. But they also had 25 yards in penalty hit. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't hurt. And that offensive line for South Carolina is doing a nice job, Bill, in their stance moving forward on the run. But when they have to stand up and back up a little bit, that pass rush from Tennessee is absolutely just hitting them right in the mouth right now. I'm not sure if it's the noise or the new system that's giving them the problem. Longest it's been yet. Petty going deep for Matthew Thomas. Thomas is a true freshman. He's out of Pearson, Georgia, and he's emerged the last few weeks as a serious threat for Petty. Julian Battle, number 14, is in man coverage. He gets turned around, loses the football, did not have a good performance last week, and was really very hard on himself. And Mike, I'm not sure he wasn't in there. Uh, that he, one foot. he had that right foot down, but I don't know if he had the ball just yet. Well, certainly the left foot was out. So the Gamecocks just managed to cross midfield, and then the penalties back him up, and Tyler Dean. Uh, yeah, he was fortunate to get that to roll out 22 yards at the 38. Tennessee, good field position for their second possession. Dean shanked the 22-yard pump, but it never should have come to that. Gamecocks should still have the ball. Now this one coming down, looks like he's got the ball right there. And look at the right foot. Looks in, the referee behind though, doesn't look like he can tell if the ball is caught, sees that left foot go down and calls it out of bounds. That, that's an excuse. Yep. He is right on the spot. He's got to make that call. Good job on the truck. So the ball's from 38. Travis Stevens <laughs> with his first carry of many, no doubt. You want to see some athletes on this team. You want to get the ball in these two guys' hands. Stevens, we just say he will be the workhorse, without a doubt. And Kelly Washington, the freshman out there, wide receiver, is just an incredible athlete. His size, 6'4", 225. He loves to get the ball in open field. Travis Stevens averaging a nation leading 30 carries per game at 5'9 and 190. And no one thought 
that would have been possible. He's much more durable than anybody had a right to expect. Let's again check Michigan-Iowa with Reese. Kirk Ferris and Hawkeyes, Dave, haven't beaten, of course, they haven't been Ferris and Hawkeyes just on. They haven't beaten Michigan and Iowa City since 85, but Liddell Betts trying to change that. And Iowa surging back on top, 26-21. May still be some surprises in store. That may be one of them. Tennessee out of the eye with no tight end, three wides. And third and three, and Stevens resetting. So no flag. Crossing going deep. This will be overthrown. Tries to hit Washington for the first time and not close. Excellent coverage that time by Sheldon Brown, the all SEC corner. Here again significant for South Carolina. The defense has not been able to get off the field the way the coaches want them to. Charlie Strong, the outstanding defensive coordinator for South Carolina, set as a goal to get his defensive unit to stop people on third down. They've been giving up 41 percent first downs in those third down situations. That's not good enough. So far, so good today. Perfect. Five time getting the snap. Lines that one into the legs of some of the Gamecocks, and it is covered with a flag down at midfield. Well, we've seen a couple of ugly little uh, punt uh, displays, haven't we? Colquitt has had a tough time yeah. this year, and you almost never see Tennessee with a 32-yard net punt, but that's what theirs is. South Carolina at 37 and change, so you would expect if they get their normal punts off, about a five-yard differential. But neither punter has done anything today. They look like uh, you and me, Michael. Tyler Dean punted one 22 yards. You thought Coco would have to work to get less than that, but he did it. Just did it there. Well, I, I, in his defense, I got to tell you, being a redshirt freshman and, and uh, having to carry the load at this level is extremely difficult. Sorting out here. <laughs> who it touched when it was lined into the line, literally. This is why if you're South Carolina, you got to be yelling, it touched them. It touched the guys well, with the, the pee on their helmets. officials album. have to decide. <laughs> when it crosses the line of scrimmage, the first person it touches is significant. Let's listen. The legal formation on the offense, the five-yard penalty. The ball was touched. It would have been recovered. Therefore, to keep the ball, they have to take the penalty. Uh, you follow that? No, he didn't mean to say it quite like no. that. He, he, he meant to say that well, Tennessee that. would have had the ball. The ball crosses the line of scrimmage. It does not matter what has happened on the backside of the line of scrimmage. Obviously, when it crossed the line of scrimmage, it touched the South Carolina player. Right. Tennessee recovered. Therefore, South Carolina is going to take the penalty and make them punt the ball again. Or they would lose possession because when, the, when the ball was past the line of scrimmage. The ball. Right, it hit it. That's, right. what, that's what the official meant to say. And now Mr. Colquitt, maybe a little more nervous yeah. even than before, has to line up and punt another one. Not exactly strength on strength. And Tennessee punts to a South Carolina team that is not much of a threat for a big return. Much better punt. Now Brewer pinned in. I'd say. <laughs> Little bit better. 43-yard boot that time. Nothing, nothing in Knoxville. Pretty much grinding to a halt. Another home game in progress in Newland Stadium. Nothing, nothing. 331 in the opening quarter. South Carolina from the 17. But they give to Derek Watson. Derek Watson. And let's check in on Maryland and Florida State in the ACC. Reese Day. Well, Dave Talman Gardner is having a huge day for Florida State. Chris Ricks, the line, he's turned the ball over in the past. He's playing big today. Gardner, his third touchdown catch, 140 yards receiving. FSU up on Maryland by a touchdown. Ford on top of Georgia by the same margin. Gators on the move right now, trying to add to it. As unnatural as it's got to seem for Tennessee fans, they're rooting for Florida today. Yeah, there's a Georgia team that won here in the last five seconds. Petty's throw in for Thomas, and then is it intercepted or not? Nope, incomplete. Rashad Baker had a chance, can't hang on. 
And third down coming. Well, from sea to shining sea, the Goodyear blimps have been flying around America since 1925. Today, the spirit of Goodyear, based in Akron, Ohio, floating nearby and providing us with these spectacular aerial views. I love those things. I think they're pretty neat. I'm going to go up in one. And we'll see you. How about next Saturday? That's around 6 o'clock. <laughs> A blimp and a blimp. Alan <laughs> Drew defense forcing another third long. They need seven. Petty with a screen. Watson. Another spin move. And he comes close but does not get the first. And some of Derek Watson's best moves have uh, really been futile because of the quick closing speed of the Tennessee defenders. Yeah, he used several of them right there. But this Tennessee defense does get off the field regularly at the to the tune of 23% third down conversion by the opponents. You see some of Watson's agility here, but it's not quite enough in this case. Nice movement. They're beating the linemen. They, you know, they're obviously faster than the offensive linemen. They're beating the linemen to their blocks on the screen. Last time for Tyler Dean, a 22-yard shank. This is not pretty. End of the end. And the return by Baker. Ending at the 48. Well, later tonight on ESPN, 7.45 Eastern, Tom Lyle Holiday, the Fighting Irish, traveling to Chestnut Hill, seeking to continue their winning streak after their first ever 0-3 start. The Irish have won three straight. If they plan on making it four, they have to shut down William Green and the B.C. Eagles. Coming up already in a 1,000-yard season. College football Saturday continues only on ESPN. Tennessee again, terrific field position. 38, Stevens straight ahead. And then push by Stevens, Gary. By Langston Moore, the nose guard. Well, I'll tell you, right now, Tennessee is establishing, Bill, absolutely nothing. It's South Carolina, you're wondering if they're going to break one off when they're on offense, but Tennessee has really shown no signs as of yet. The South Carolina defense is salty. They'll play the run really well, but you know Tennessee will keep coming at them. That's Philip Fulmer football. Bobby Gray in the motion. Second and seven. Boston pass intended for his fullback, and Will Bartholomew can't bring it down. We bring you another Reese Davis update. And a tour of the Sunshine State, Dave. Florida State and Maryland, 38-31. You see the situation, third and six. Ricks off a little play fake. Just heaves it up off his back foot, and Javon Walker will take care of that. 14 passes for Rick, 45-31 now. Over in Jacksonville, the Dogs and Gators, I mentioned that Florida was on the move. I guess we're going from Ricks to Rex. Rex Grossman, Rashad Caldwell, 30 yards, and 24-10 Gators. Third and seven balls. With a cross and out of it. Now up against the play pack. And well protected over the middle, and Bobby Graham with the catch. Although Kenny Harney's trying to rule it incomplete, it's not up to him got to go to the sticks on that. You've got to get to the sticks. They came up short about a yard. You know the linebackers are going to be there in that zone. They're going to sit there. You have to be at the first down marker when you make the catch. This is Tennessee, the home of field position football, starting with General Bob Nealon. Philip Fulmer's going to punt the ball and do the safe thing. And Clausen, greeted by offensive coordinator Randy Sanders. Come up just short. Good spot for a fake if they're so inclined. Time. Rule, Raven fair catch just inside the 10. And let's set it down to Michelle. Well, you guys, Tennessee's defensive front takes great pride in staying low on every play. And here's how they work on it. Mike Golick demonstrating for us earlier the trampoline shoot, usually reserved for offensive linemen. No helmets allowed. That would be too safe. They run forward, sideways, and backwards. Mike Golick handled it pretty well. Let me tell you what. It was hard. <laughs> I ran That's back. We, we had to have oxygen in the ambulance. Hand in by. I heard after that. I was good doing that. Come on. You still got it. You've been at the waist. <laughs> now the Gamecocks backed up. 
and trying to fight their way from their own can. They pitch wide to Watson with a flag down. He picks up three yards. Tackled there by the strong safety, Julian Battle. To continue on what Michelle was saying, anytime we've talked to John Henderson, we've got a couple of games of theirs this year, and you ask him about what he does on the field, it's stay low, it's stay low. He said we practice every day. They practice in that shoot I ran through every day to stay low and be technique conscious. And that's that's a great thing to do if you're a defensive lineman. That's what you're taught. Get your hands out and use leverage. And he's six foot seven. He says if I don't stay low, I'm gonna get taken back off the ball. So that shoot is used a whole lot on that practice field and it pays dividends. And the linemen just love it so much. They hate it. Are you kidding me? Phil, I hate to tell you they hated coaches too, so <laughs> Odie on the offense, half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Hey, Mike, real quick on that. One thing you didn't have on, like they practice without a helmet, if they get too high in that shoot, they hit their head on a metal bar that's over the top. So you have a great motivation to stay low in that shoot. That's absolutely right. Absolutely right. He played without a helmet. Gamecocks have to go 95 yards and change field uh, ends after the end of the first quarter. A scoreless first quarter. Number 14 visiting number second quarter now from Warren Neyland Stadium. First and 15 Gamecocks there on five-yard line. With a full house back field. Pinnock up the middle and he slams his way out to the 10. Our ESPN2 game track through the first quarter. Gamecocks after rushing for only 24 yards in the last meeting, 62 of the first quarter. Defense holding Tennessee to 18 total yards. They're averaging 414. They got a long way to go with that Tennessee offense, guys. The kinds of officials' calls that determine football games like this, they must get these right. Matthew Thomas inbounds with the kick, the call out of bounds. Full house again. Pinnock again. And this time, he's got John Henderson all over him. Big John, the Outland Trophy winner. How's that for a 250-pounder? He's going to have a tough time running over the 290-pounder. And you saw the scramble block low that was tried by Kevin Rivers. He tried to go low on John to get into his legs. John, I, I guarantee you, from working on that shoot, stayed down low, kept his hands. Down low, keeping the old lineman off his leg. He's able to come off and make that play. He'd been a little more at the knees than you did. He's like a lot more at the knees than I do. He looks like an athlete. He went two tight ends, full house. Great kick. Got him. Carried off by Penny, and it's caught by Watson. Knocked out with the first down to the 25-yard line. A gain of 16 yards. Great job on the play fake. It's a just going to dump it right in the middle of the field. Watson sneaks out to the outside, and he was wide open right away. It was just a matter of when Petty was going to get it to him. It was a beautiful route, well executed by Watson, and then a tough catch. Actually, Petty had a little trouble seating the ball in his hand. It's a perfect throw, and good concentration by Watson to catch that football and put it away. Now, a little moving man. They go back to this spread. Three wides. Petty keeping. And knocked out by Rashad Baker. Michigan and Iowa. What now, Reese Dave? We faded three yards in a cloud of dust for three touchdowns and a blown-up scoreboard. John Navarre finding John Thompson for the touchdown. Michigan now on top 29-26. And UCLA not willing to give up that perfect season just yet. Down 31-7 at one point. Scott McEwen, who's in the game, finds Brian Fletcher. And it's a three-point game with a little less than five minutes to go. Open up for Nebraska, UCLA, Miami. Yep, they control the BCS. See if UCLA can manage that comeback. Set it down in six. Watson with room on the outside. And another big gainer for Derek Watson, the junior from Williamston, South Carolina. 16 yards knocked out by Mark Jones, the free safety. 
Great blocking again. They're doing great trap blocking. That time, Kevin Rivers, and there was man coverage on the outside. It's going to come right at you. The corner's getting out of there because he's in man. The lineman just taking people down the field. Wide open, and again, the corner's not there because he was in man coverage. The wide receiver took off down the field, took him right out of the play, but you've got to give it up. I know we're showing Derek Watson's headshot here, but those five guys in front, Bill, are pushing Tennessee around. New yes, they quarterback, are. Corey Jenkins, who normally plays two or three series, a major running threat. Hey, another running back at quarterback. He gives to Watson. A couple of nice cutbacks, and Watson reaching the 49-yard line. And Mike, you referred to this early, but this is the kind of thing that gets coaches queasy in the stomach if you've got orange on here. South Carolina, when it doesn't look like they're doing much, it's second and six. They're right. still making four yards because the line is pushing the defensive line back. On the other side of the ball, Tennessee's getting nothing up front. And one more running threat for them to worry about. Jenkins, a 25-year-old junior. Another former minor league baseball player. Option kicks. Watson surrounded and not free and recovered at the 43 by Tennessee. Eddie Moore, the strong side linebacker. There's where athleticism comes into play. Nobody out there on Watson on the outside, but the speed of that Tennessee defense brought him there. He's trying to get anything he can. A lot of orange shirts around him. Ball gets stripped out. I'll tell you what, Rashad Moore, number 58, he might have had a shot to pick this thing up. But Eddie Moore just fell on it. Yeah, they were fighting over it. Some guy that caused the fumble recovered the fumble. Volunteers with a chance to break out in front. Travis Stevens breaking into the secondary and inside the 35-yard line for the SEC's leading rusher on a school record pace of 150 yards per game. In fact, the pace continues. He would shatter the school season season record by a couple of hundred yards. He is lightning this time. He can thank Troy Fleming, number 27, his fullback. Nice job right there. 27, knocking his man out of the hole. Pop, there goes Stevens through there. Second of the short two, and Stevens easily picking that up and down to the 29. Now you're getting yeah. movement, Mike. Yeah, Tennessee, again, on, on their side of the ball, they're averaging a buck 80 on the ground. That's second in the SEC behind Alabama, so they have the big earth movers up front that want to do some damage as well. The Volunteers have had the field position advantage all first half. First time they look like they're ready to do something about it. First down from the 29 of South Carolina. Stevens. South Carolina defense based on yielding a little at a time, making you drive 10, 12, 14 plays, try not to make a mistake. And one of the top scoring defenses in the conference against the top runner. And as we said, with a 41 carry game against Arkansas School, single game record, 30 carries per game, about 10 more per game than anybody, even Travis expected. He's 5'9, a buck 90. And he says he feels as good as before the season began. Not a bruise on Inside the 20, flag is down. Stevens to the 17 with the play stand. Jeremiah Garrison, outside backer over. Along with Andre Goodman, and this one will come back. I would say marriage agrees with Travis. <laughs> Married in June. And has uh, had the best year of his life ever since. Holding on the offense. 10 yards penalty from the previous five. Repeat the down. And you know, he wanted to prove some things behind Travis Henry and then Jamal Lewis, always always the backup, always the second fiddle, and got his chance this year. And Coach Fulmer told us in game one against Syracuse, they were hoping to get maybe 15, 18 carries a game out of him and hope he could hold up. Now, 30 carries a game later, he's holding up pretty darn well. well they were 41. Yeah, 41 against Arkansas. We were there. He was in 3 4 freshman in that first game, thinking they would need some depth behind him. Turns out they really haven't. 
Again to the secondary with the 27 down to Michelle. Well, you guys asked her former what the biggest difference was between Travis Stevens this season and last, and he said Stevens has a sense of purpose. He wants to play in the NFL, and he wants to be remembered as one of the great backs to play at Tennessee. And former says Stevens has never lacked confidence, and as if to prove it, Stevens told me he believed he could have played in the NFL after a single season of college football, Dave. Not lacking for confidence. No, gotta have it. Oh, he showed he had confidence just by getting married. Oh. Oh, an eight possum. And a one of four, five yards. Over the middle, incomplete. And looking for a flag, not getting it. Dante Starwood. Now here comes a flag. Wow. That is a late, late flag there. Antoine Nesmith on the coverage. We'll take a look at this one. That, that flag came in, what, a good five, six seconds after the play? At least. Antoine Nesmith, all for this. Yeah. Right, let's take a look. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can't pull that orange away from the body. Yeah, yeah it's they're going to see that, Antoine. Like I said, great call by the official, even though it was late. <laughs> yeah, you and Lou felt real good about it. That's up there. Had trouble getting that thing out of his pocket. Yeah, the big guy in the sky don't lie there, Antoine. Sorry. This is a big game coach, though. Think of Lou Holtz's career, and it seems like every year he pulls off a monumental win on the road somewhere. He also pulls off a marvelous workout. He walks at least 73 miles during the game, back and forth. The Tennessee had every opportunity to make something out of this drive, and that. South Carolina defense holding strong. Big Kalimba lines up all over the place. You never know where he's going to be. That's standing play. First down from the 20. And the collide on the give. Bad exchange that time with Clawson and Stevens. He lost it after the whistle for a major loss. A really alert play by Langston Moore, number 57, the nose guard. You don't know if that whistle's blown. You jerk that ball and take off. Great penetration by Moore and the rest of that D-line. Oh, that's just a nice shrug move. Wow. That's a good-looking athlete right there down in that defensive nose position. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you, you love those guys, yeah, don't you? Right there. Big old, big old guys. Big guys. Second and 15. Uh, cooperates. It's quiet. Watson gets the audible call and fires the star. Hit immediately. Great job of closing that time by Jermaine Lemon, the linebacker. That ball was supposed to come out a little earlier, but Rashad Faze on number 11, he came into Clawson's area, so Clawson had to pull it down and wait, and that gave. Lemon a chance to come over and finish it up. What a great job of teamwork defense there. Clawson should have just pulled it down and get what he could get. Because that gets dangerous when you hesitate on those. He's another yard and over the third and 16. Clawson coming off consecutive boot performances has got nothing going yet. Throws it right to the game pass. Easy interception, Kenny Harney. Returns it to the 38. And it's one of those where everyone watches and says, what was he looking at? Harney with the pick. South Carolina still scoreless in Tennessee. Bill Fulmer says, as Clawson's year has developed, fewer and fewer times as he watched tape with him and say, what were you thinking? Maybe once a game, and it used to be eight, ten times he was making right, right. correct. Exactly what he said. He's still got that one time of brain lock every game. That one cost Tennessee an easy scoring chance. For the game cox looking for the slipstream. Matthew Thomas. 
They're all over the field, quick closing defenders. And this time, Robert Peace, who backs up Dominique Stevenson, a middle linebacker. Dominique Stevenson, a native South Carolinian, remembered in South Carolina at williams Bryce Stadium for touring the field with the Tennessee flag after the game last year. Dominique said he got a lot of attention in his home state. Thomas good for six, second and four. And the shotgun handoff to Watts at the Pennick, and Pennick with that leg drive turns it into a short gain as Albert Hainsworth hangs on for dear life. One more look at the easy pick by Harney. Harney's just dropping back into coverage, and Clawson needed a little more air on that ball. He threw it on a line drive, and Harney was right there. And Clawson had to be looking almost right through him. So he's got to get some a little more air, but he saw the safety coming over as well, so he wanted to try and drill it in there. Too low a trajectory on that. Bad decision. Here's a third and two. With a full house, Gary's going to come up well short. As Pinnock is undercut immediately by Eddie Moore. And Eddie Moore's got himself just a little bit of a headache. He got up slow from that one. Pinnock 250, and about 240 of that is his legs. So a quick three and out. Lou Holtz going to have to punt it right back to Tennessee. Very concerned, as anybody should be, playing the volunteers about extending the drives because nobody in the SEC does a better job of eating the clock than the balls. And a very short possession after the interception. Tyler Dean's punt is a short one. They're caught in the crowd. And now will come uh, a flag as Rashad Baker signaled fair catch on just a 32-yard punt. See if anybody was too close to him. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. But just think about the field position change dictated by the interception. Yes, that was not very good offensively for South Carolina, but instead of playing defense on their own 15-yard line, they're playing in Tennessee's end of the field. Interference with the opportunity on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. 521 to go in a fast-moving, scoreless first half. One of the very best in the country right there, Will Overstreet, who has missed the last two games of a sprained knee. Available, we were told, maybe for a key third down or two today. But really hoping he can return to the Notre Dame game next week. First down throw by Clawson is incomplete intended for Kelly Washington. We go to Michelle. Well, Dave, maybe the most pivotal moment of the season for Casey Clawson came at halftime of the LSU game when the Vols were trailing 7-6. It was then that John Henderson stood up in the locker room and delivered a fiery speech that singled out Clawson and challenged him to take charge. Now, in the 10 quarters since that halftime speech, Clawson has certainly answered the challenge. 67% completion rate, six touchdowns, one INT. Look at the difference from the first 10 quarters to the last. Those last 10 coming before this game after that talk, Dave. Today, he's two for seven for four yards. Good John may have to have another talk at halftime. Throw on the run. This one is complete. And it's written the tight in. Driven out of the 34-yard line by DeAndre Island. But well, there's no question that that jarred something loose inside of Casey Clawson to bring out the best in it. Man, 6'7", 290 talking to him. That jar something. <laughs> Here's Whitney who had seven receptions last week against Alabama for 91 yards. Becoming the goal. Actually showed some moves last week against Bama. Didn't have a chance to use him there. He yeah, he's scored. your hero because he's a former D lineman. that's over there catching the football and making first downs. Last week had a touchdown. They think a developing star. And the Tennessee play of the year from Elizabeth Cook. Third and two. Break off. That's the Wilson. And the time. Throwing to deep Washington. To the 30. Still on his feet at the 25. 39 yards. 
Lawson to Washington. Now, this is a guy, Kelly Washington, that doesn't even practice. He hasn't played football in six years or five years, whatever it is. He's got a stress fracture in his foot, but nothing seems to bother him on game day. He keeps his balance here, almost goes the distance. What a remarkable athlete. Calls himself the horse of the offense, and I believe him. Sub 4-5 speed, 37 and a half inch vertical leap, and throw the ball 80 yards. He's about the quarterback in the year again, and benches 300 plus points. Watson sacked at the 36 yard line. Dennis Quinn, who's coming off knee surgery after their Alabama game. Michelle. Well, not only does Kelly Washington call himself the horse of the offense, he said, if you want to win the game, you've got to feed the horse. And Randy Sanders wasn't thrilled with the quote saying, you know, he reminded Kelly that football is a team game. But Kelly told me he stands by his quote. He wants to be the big play guy on this volunteer offense. That was a big, big pretty big play, and I bet Sanders agrees. And, and you know what? And, and Michelle, great point about what Randy Sanders said about the team, and that's absolutely right. You want that, but when the team is struggling a little bit, you look for individuals to carry them, and that's something that Kelly Washington can certainly do. Well, you notice they are throwing the balls to him. Yep. <laughs> Timeout called by the Vols. 4-0-8 in the first half. A good scoring chance. Nothing, nothing. Tennessee and South Carolina, two teams that uh, seem to have their offenses on a roll. Fighting to a scoreless first half tie. 4-0-8 to go in the second quarter. And the balls, after a timeout, turn out four wides on second down and 19. Watson, who just hit the big play to Kelly Washington, has him wide right. Gets for him again on the snap. Got him to the 23. And from there, third down coming. That picks up 12. Do we see a theme here, possibly? Clear out? Kelly on one side, throw everybody on the other side and just take a one-on-one, -on -one, this time a slant on Goodman. Three receivers to the left. Yep. Kelly Washington over here. It's very clear what they're doing. They're saying to Goodman, we're going to put our horse on you and you can't cover him. See third and eight here. Same formation. Don't pick it up. Looking at a fairly long field goal time. Washington again, wide right. Lawson not looking that way this time. Now over the middle and a diving catch inside the 10. Bobby Graham, 13 yards, first and goal, Tennessee. That time, the linebackers, Jermaine Lemon and Kenny Harney. Remember, Harney got the interception last time. This time in their zone drop, they split farther apart. And Graham found the hole right in the middle. He did, and the reason that the play worked is because the big man up front protected well against the three-man rush. They've got both... The people to the left, double team, no pass left. Racing by Whitten, the pass to Stevens. He's inside the five with a dive to the pylon, and he got there. Touchdown. It was a Kelly Washington drive. The two big plays that got him down close. And the little hook in the middle to Graham and then the off-tackle run that has become a staple of Tennessee offense, that sort of sequence. Alex Walls has made 62, make it 63 consecutive. Point after touchdown, seven, nothing. Randy Sanders says to watch Travis Stevens live, it's like watching a clinic tape. He does everything right, including getting the right angle to get that just inside the pylon. Big news for Tennessee fans, Georgia's second conference loss. Now, if Tennessee knocks off South Carolina tonight, they will be the team that controls its destiny in the East. Right now, that team is South Carolina, which won at Georgia. Alex Walls, ready to kick to Brewer or Watson. This is Brewer from the five. 
Well, again, big returns have been very hard to come by for the game pass. As we look at the Travis Stevens touchdown. Now he gets a touchdown, but he's going to go thank a, a, a more than a few people on this one, especially Troy Fleming and Fred Weary. Fleming's going to have the kick out. Weary's going underneath. Chops him. Easy run in for Stevens. Just the right angle at the end, and a familiar sight this year. Stevens celebrating the score. Running a 73-yard drive. Fashion finally getting sent to go in three years. With the connections to Washington. Reverse Thomas. Got her out in front. Runs right past him. He's upended at the 37. Andre Lapp here after a gain of 18 for Matthew Thomas. And it is so hard to coach your lineman to get out there and really motor. Kevin Rivers is out there in the back. Matthew Thomas runs right by him because he's not accelerating. Number 78 is out there in front. He's got a chance. Come on, run, 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 run. <laughs> he's trying. All right, it's happened to all of us. Still a big play. Could have been bigger. Penning. Incomplete. Brian Scott has not been heard from yet. And that would have been his first catch tonight. Later tonight, here on ESPN2. Ole Miss quarterback Eli Manning having a phenomenal season. He returns to his native Louisiana to take on Rohan Davey and the LSU Tigers. 9 Eastern following us. College football Saturday continuing on ESPN2. 14 touchdowns, one interception by Eli. And second down, Petty. This one is caught, and that's going to be near the first down, coming right back to Scott. Who is their senior? Senior leads them with now 27 catches on the year. He had the game winner, in fact, in their biggest win early in the season at Georgia. They are just short. And they they didn't make it out of the last drive on a third and one. Pinnock got stopped short. They need to convert this. Leading inches, they stay in the spread. And Petty breaking through to the 43-yard line. Oh, and if Petty just had a little bit more, what do you call it, elusiveness, he okay. might have been off for at least another six or eight yards before six guys caught him. Goodbye by Travell Wharton, 68 right there. On right the kickoff, give him a move. Yeah. I gave him four moves, and they got tackled. Here we are complaining. You're complaining about an 11-yard gain on third and inches. He's by a the coach, quarterback. Dave. He's a coach. Well, Rashad Baker made a nice play. That's what three safeties are supposed to do. That's what really happened. Empty backfield, five wides, and that one should have been caught by Watson. And I am not a coach anymore. I am an expert. <laughs> so you leave the sideline where you're always an idiot to somebody and you go get on the press elevator you ride up three floors and you are an expert that's why i came up here that word you said before that you were on the sideline you continued it up here in the booth <laughs> i didn't want to say it again yeah you did watson should have had that ball would have been second down and five right now kevin rivers has limped off and he's replaced the guard by cj fry on second and ten Eddie's pass, again complete, inside the 40, first catch, Carlos Spikes. And for more than 75 years, millions have watched the Goodyear Blimps hovering above special events. Today, the spirit of Goodyear based near Akron, Ohio. Goodyear has been providing such aerial camera facilities since 1962. We're seeing great views of Knoxville here tonight. Timeout, 105 and a half. 36 South Carolina, they are coming off a school record, 656 total yards against Vandy last week. They've managed 149 tonight. They're not getting Tennessee, but they trail 7 0. And on the big third down, they shovel to Ryan Brewer, who still comes up short, even with the second effort to the 35. Now, uh, what do you do? Yard and a half to go, Bill. Ryan Brewer is their Mr. Ohio all-purpose player. We got another Mr. Ohio up here, Golick. I'll call this second time out to decide what to do on fourth down. 
Well, Daniel Weaver staying loose on a chilly night, but not right now. Ready to get him in. That'd be about a 53-yarder. Yeah, that'd be 10 yards farther than his best. Look at that wind going. Into the wind. Yeah. And so, full house on fourth down to go for. And Watson has the corner turn into the foot race. Derek Watson out at the seven. Pinnock with the block, Bill. They lined up in unbalanced. They're unbalanced to the right, and they run to the short side. Lou Holtz brought his Notre Dame team here, had a fourth down situation, handed the ball to Rocket Ishmael. He's going to, this is an unbalanced formation. You see that there are five guys to the right, two to the left, a great block by Andrew Pinnock, and there goes Watson down the sideline. Ishmael scored to beat Tennessee. When they came up here, I think the year was uh, somewhere around, I don't know, 88, 89, 90. It was 90, yeah. Because I remember. I think after, it was around 90. It was 90. After that win, Reggie White had to sing uh, the Notre Dame fight song. We were both with the Eagles then, and uh, he had to sing on national TV. It was a beautiful thing. And how many sacks did you and Reggie have between you? 211. And how many did he have? 198. <laughs> Half time coming up. ECS, well, some <laughs> think it's a mess. I always thought it was a mess. It definitely got more interesting today. Down to four unbeatens. And Joe Pa finally has the record to himself. Good come from behind. Went over Ohio State today. Good for him. I'm happy uh, that, that he got that record. Unfortunately, kind of a long time coming to get those last few in. Certainly a great, a great accomplishment. Down to Michelle. Oh, if you ask Phil Fulmer about the BCS, the thing that he had to say, Dave, was, hey, we're still in the mix. And he spent, he said, maybe one minute talking with his team about it, telling them, you guys can determine what we do. You can stay in the mix, but this game is pivotal for us. And then he stopped talking about the BCS altogether, and he vows not to talk about it again, Dave. Probably a smart way to handle that. Yeah, especially since this game is an elimination game. I, I, I think we all agree on that for the SEC uh, East. See, no one has ever won the East with two losses. And the loser they will have two conference losses. 29-yard gain on fourth down by Watson. So it's a first and goal from the seven. 36 seconds. Ritz is picked up. Petty with a throwback for Watson. Makes the catch. The spin. The lead. Touchdown. With a flag down. But Derek Watson at his absolute best. The last two plays. And Holtz wants to know if this is going to negate the touchdown. Oh, this be a kick. Harold Mitchell down there sorting it out. Boy, I tell you, Jabari Greer had great coverage for Tennessee, but Watson took the ball and just absolutely fantastic determination to get it in the end zone. throws the flag because he sees a lineman downfield. When it is established that the ball was caught behind the line of scrimmage, that makes the lineman being downfield perfectly legal. Weaver now to tie it. And goes. 36 seconds to spare. 7-7. Seven, seven. I tell you what, for a throwback, you're supposed to fool the corner, but Jabari Greer didn't get fooled at all. Look at that. He's, he's just a step behind. He's right there. Has a chance to make a tackle at the five. Watson been using that spin move all night, Bill, running the ball. He does it again here to get in the end zone. Look at this great stretch for the pylon. That's right. Two brilliant calls in oh. a row, in my opinion, to line up in unbalanced, run to the short side on fourth and short for the long run, come right back with the sprint right and the throw back to the tailback. Two great calls by Skip Holtz. 
the offensive coordinator and son of Dad Lou. They've been working together in the coaching business for seven years. Skip says, we've been together our whole lives. We've coached together for seven years, and we really are beginning to understand each other. I would think so. A lot of Derek Watson throughout that 81-yard scoring drive. The 29-yard gain on fourth and one and a half, setting up his seven-yard touchdown and the 7-7 seven, seven tie. That's a ball game, game. Yep, they play in tackle, that's for sure. Derek Bowers kick, feel it inside the 10. And returned by Leonard Scott out to the 25 with 18 seconds and one time out for the ball. And that kind of kick is exactly what you do not want from your kicker. You tell the kid, kick the squib kick. All right, that's a little bit of a risk. He kicks a line shot to a 4-3 sprinter at the goal line who catches it on the dead run. He might just take it back the other way faster than it came down there. I'll tell you, South Carolina offensively has looked like they've had a little more Going on in Tennessee, their offense is not looking sick except for that driver, Kelly Washington, catching the pass. Washington's last two games averaging right at 300 yards through the air. Stevens doing it on the ground and run out of bounds at the 46 with 10 seconds to go. 29 yards to Travis Stevens. And time to take one shot at getting into field goal range since they have the timeout. And I meant to say in Stevens running too, but you cut me off, Dave. <laughs> Great hole opening up. You wonder, did South Carolina get a little slacked off, Bill, thinking they're just going to run the ball, they're going to run out the clock for halftime, and Stevens, he's playing hard for the entire... 30 minutes of this first half. I think he has become a great player. He's become, went from a, a good tailback to a great football player. They keep an eye on Washington again, wide right. Washington with deep left this time, and a diving near catch by Dante Stallworth. He had Sheldon Brown beaten inside the five and out on the four seconds. That was bold, and I like the call. Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator for Tennessee, I think that's exactly what you do when you have this kind of speed. Stallworth inches from another big play for the big orange. I, I'm going to say, Bill, do you like that call? Do you like yourself a 15, 20-yard out route and a field goal and going to the halftime? I, like, I like going for the downs in this situation. I don't know. I don't know. Field goal kick has been struggling. And now they have to. Go for the downs again, that is. The last play that happens in a shovel. And Troy Fleming reaching the 35-yard line. Terrific first half. 7-7 seven, seven game. With control of the SEC East in the balance. And let's go down to Michelle. All right, with Phil Fulmer, a 7-7 ball game, and that scoring drive by Tennessee propelled by Kelly Washington. Really, how effective can your passing game be in opening up your run? Well, we just got to get on the same page, I think, a little bit and do both a little bit better. We have, First quarter, we only had the ball nine plays. They did a good job of keeping it away from us, and I think as we go along, we got into a little bit better rhythm. But uh, obviously, we've got it. It's a championship-type football game, so it's going to be like this. They were able to score as well. Your defense, what do they need to adjust? Well, we'll see when we get in there. Obviously, the sweep on short yardage is something that we've got to adjust on. Otherwise, we've done, we've held them pretty good. Our defense was great in the first quarter of, uh, when we were giving up field position to hold them. We just got to play a little bit better, I think, overall. Phil Fulmer, thank you. Right. Phil Fulmer has never... Game at 7-7, 144 yards rushing against one of the nation's best rushing defenses, but a little imbalance in your offense. Does that concern you, or can you win with the run? No, we got to be able to throw it, but... We haven't had real good field position. And you aren't going to march 85 yards on Tennessee Austin. I think we're playing hard. We're playing well. We had a lot of penalties go against us and some calls. that We just got to rise above it. All right, Coach. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. I'm sorry. I thought that was mine. Sorry. Right. South Carolina set for the second half kickoff. And Joey Bowers... 
with a low line drive. Tennessee has Derek Tinsley return at 22 yards. And the ESPN2 first half game plan. Casey Clawson's come a long, long way this year, but he still tends to make one big play a game that goes the wrong way. Philip Fulmer still working with him on that. They started getting to go in Tennessee by going to Kelly Washington and Travis Stevens. Those are their go-to guys. Watson responsible for the South Carolina touchdown. And the second half begins with a flag down. Stevens into the corner and picks up 12 yards as we wait for the indication. Travis in the first half right at 68 yards on only 10 carries, well below his normal workload. It's going to be holding against Tennessee. Odie on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Got to the outside pretty easily. Maybe may have been because Will Bartholomew, the fullback, he may have been the one that got called for holding either way. Big play negated. Well, he's got to be feeling that if they just have it anywhere near tied when the fourth quarter begins, it's in their back pocket because nobody has been a better fourth quarter team. So the third quarter... Even more critical than normal for South Carolina. And they got him pinned back now inside their 20. Good reaction that time. John Stamper, left defensive end. I tell you what I'm surprised at. Why Tennessee? We saw it a lot when we covered them a couple of times this season already, Bill. Is the quick hitch and the bubble screen. Get the ball out quick to the receiver. South Carolina is not a big man team. They're going to play off with their defensive backs. There is some cushion between the wide receiver and the DB. I would th think there would be some more hitches, some quick passes out to the receivers and let them do a little work. I think you're going to see more of that. I really do. And I think you're right. Austin with three wides. Second and long. Time to go over the middle for Stallworth and Dante into the secondary with the first down to the 45-yard line. 25 yards. And the cast not bothering Dante Stallworth. Not last week and so far not tonight. Beautiful route with the soft cast covered with rubber, which causes Dante Stallworth to have to catch the ball in whatever way he can, but he manages. And he's the man who really lights this team up from an emotional standpoint. Even at practice, he's always in people's face, always joshing around, keeping the guys going, and he does it with performance. And now he's back and can team with their hottest receiver, Kelly Washington. And that means major problems for every secondary they play. Lawson deciding to keep. And no gain down to Michelle. You mentioned Dante Stallworth. He missed the last three games with a broken bone in his wrist. He had a pin inserted into the wrist to have the smaller bone in there held together. Now, this should be his last week in that cast that you mentioned. And Bill, as a former coach, he had it exactly right. An eighth of an inch padding around the cast, which has to be approved by the referee and then taped. And it doesn't change the way Casey Claus has been throwing to him, Bill. No, it just means he has to hem it up somehow, but he manages to do it. the eye to give to Stevens and the game top 49 yard line it'll be third and four it was kind of fun yesterday when we were talking to the players after we finished uh, and Dante Stallworth was one of the guys we were talking to Michelle went up to him and they were comparing injuries because Michelle broke her wrist and had some pins in her wrist and it hasn't affected her holding the microphone at all and it hasn't affected <laughs> Stallworth going over the middle so no, but it's, a, it's affected the speed at which uh, I can compete for food with you at the dinner table though <laughs> <laughs> You're always going to lose that battle, even healthy. Long four they need here on third down. And Clawson, a little turn in. That's been probably.
probably their most successful pattern, no matter whom they've gone to, is John Finlayson's first catch of the night, just his second catch of the season, and they get 11 yards out of it. <laughs> this is a 275-pound guy lined up as an X, way outside, coming inside. What does the little corner think he's doing? He's running a slant, Bill. What is he doing? <laughs> well, he certainly could protect himself from the defensive back. He just jumps. Oh, yeah. Merging as a weapon this year. From the 39. They start with Stevens. And what a form tackle Antoine Neesmith turns in here. And congratulated by Stevens. I'm telling you, I love watching Stevens play football. He reminds me of Tony Dorsett. Watch, and he gets a little help again. Watch Bartholomew, the fullback, absolutely destroy his man and bury him. Just watch him drive, drive, drive. Watch at the end. Buries him. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Easy to run behind that, huh? Stevens ran for eight. Motion by Bobby Graham. Second down and two. Right back to Travis. Typical good cutback. Always finds whatever seam may be there. And it's first and ten at the 26. And that's something you can't teach, is it, Bill? That that cutback there, his cutback was going north and south, though. It wasn't going east and west. He was always going down the field. That's that old run to daylight, peripheral vision, and seeing the seeing the cuts and suddenly making them and not even being able to explain how or why. And that's what makes a great back. Well, people have asked Travis about specific cutbacks, and you can't necessarily remember. They blitz Clashen into a quick incompletion intended for Jason Witten. Well, this is certainly the most in sync we've seen this Tennessee offense tonight. And that one to Witten, we saw the reception to Finlayson, and we talked about the tight ends, Dave, about them being more involved. And that has a lot to do with how Kelly Washington is doing on the outside and Dante Stallworth coming back. The attention being paid to the wideouts opens it up for Andy Sanders' offense with the tight ends. A weapon everywhere you look. Boston after a very poor start tonight. Number seven get respectable. Nine out of 16, big mistake. Interception thrown right to Kenny Harney. And Tennessee had scoring position. Another strike, and inside the 10 goes Kelly Washington. First and goal, 21 yards. There you are, Mike. Just the very thing that you brought up. The hitches, the curls. The standard Tennessee patterns. Kelly Washington's not just a guy that goes deep. He can catch it in traffic, put it away, secure the football, and make sure he ends up with it at the end of the route. Look at the room he has after he catches the three yards between him and the DB. No football since 96. No rush on the knee. From the five, two tight ends, Stephen with a leap just to get the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Jermaine Woman, number 36, inside linebacker for South Carolina, and he's made a lot of big plays tonight. We haven't called his name as much as we should have. We've talked about other things, but he meets the lead blocker, Mike, on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And that's what you want to do in this area is you want to establish a new line of scrimmage. Running back tried to jump over a mountain there and got about halfway up it, hit the side. Still at the five. Stevens again, same result. A stout South Carolina defense as they've been the last two years, really. Tennessee's uh, red zone, or as Tennessee calls it, their orange right. zone situation. Excuse me, Dave. But um, Tennessee's resolve in this game is to do a great job of scoring touchdowns, not field goals because South Carolina is very, very stout inside what they call the red zone, but Tennessee calls the orange zone inside the 20. Someone give it a name already. Red zone, orange zone. Plus territory. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Roll from the five. And a timeout called by Tennessee. Eight minutes and 25 seconds in the third quarter. Balls poised to take the lead. There on Smokey, the blue pick coonhound. 
And Tennessee after the timeout, third and goal. They have not moved it since Kelly Washington got him down there close. 20 times people have been inside the 20 in Carolina, only 10 touchdowns this year. All right, Ray to stops. Four wides and movements. And now the flag. Red Weary moving on the Tennessee side. Everybody pointed one another. That's the best part of a penalty like that. Everybody just points with one another, and everybody wants to give their opinion to the referee. Well, balls look pretty happy. We'll hear Harold Mitchell tell us his why. Dead ball. Contact on the defense. Half the distance. The piece of Yep, the rule says if the defensive lineman moves into the neutral zone and prompts an offensive lineman to move, it's called on the defense. And that's been that way about two years. I think that's a good rule, too. You used to get the D lineman jumping into the neutral zone trying to get the O lineman. No, you, knew, to, uh, you guys, you never did that, though. All the time. We knew, but the offensive lineman always had the high IQs and the, and the less athletic ability, so you rarely felt for it. <laughs> that covers that. What they needed now from two and a half. They cross wide to Stevens. And Stevens actually losing yardage. Terrific containment by the right side of the Gamecock defense and especially by Sheldon Brown. Sheldon Brown shows why he's an All-American, number 24, the corner. Quick penetration, and actually, Travis Stevens tripped over his own man. He Troy did. Fleming, he did. 27. Troy Fleming, the fullback, going out there to block. He ends up on the ground. So he got ricocheted. Yep. And then Steven yeah. tripped right over him. Yep. Good call, Bill. It wasn't hard to see. <laughs> That's good for credit. Take it. Thanks. You're welcome. Alex Thanks. Walls has had, by his standards, an off year. He was the second most accurate kicker in the history of the SEC coming into this year. No problem with that one. Now, 7 out of 11 on the year. And he breaks the tie with 7.35 to go in the third. 10-7. Walls. Camera focused on an event. You know you're going to get a unique view today. The spirit of Goodyear carries on that proud tradition begun in 1962. Goodyear blimps have been appearing over major events since 1925. And this will qualify as major. Number nine against number 14. For control of the SEC East. Both these teams still have Florida on the docket. But the winner will control its destiny from here on in. Tennessee, after taking the 10-7 lead, the short kick, some confusion. Now, finally, Ryan Brewer turns it into a nice return, maybe a huge return. And finally caught and knocked out at the 41-yard line. He turns it into a 24-yard return, ended by Derek Tinsley down to Michelle. Dave, I'm standing behind the Tennessee bench where the offense met after having to settle for the field goal instead of a touchdown. And it was Casey Clawson getting in the faces of his receivers, particularly Kelly Washington, about the way they played on that drive. Clawson very, very upset they did not score a touchdown. He's now talking to Randy Sanders about what to do next, Dave. Oh, Washington had got him down there close. Not to blame him for much. Stevens got no blocking on third and goal. Watson with a three. Faced by Richmond. And Constantine Richmond continues to hold on the right defensive end well as they wait for Will Overstreet to get well. Hopefully by next week he's back. Put a bow on that red zone for Tennessee. Last four games, 13 possessions, seven touchdowns, four field goals. Tennessee, the top rushing defense in the SEC, seventh best in the country. But look how the Gamecocks have gashed them tonight. More than twice what they allow on average. And a long way still to go in the third quarter. Watson caught from behind by Albert Hainsworth. <laughs> Philip Fulmer actually said these words to me. When Albert Hainsworth is full speed, talent-wise, he is a better player than John Henderson. I said, excuse me, what did you say? Coach Fulmer, so, and he said it again. And you see that big guy accelerate 305 pounds, and you figure that the coach knows what he's talking about. Here tells Albert for one more year. This the junior from Hartsville, South Carolina. Extra meaning for him in this one. The turn in caught by Watson. First down to the Tennessee 38, covered by Andre Lott, but Petty zipped the strike to Derek Watson. Great, great job. 
The read by Petty, the route by Watson. Watson knew the blitz was coming on the other side of the field. It looks like this one's coming back, though. Good read by everybody, but somebody did something illegal. Illegal formation uh -huh. on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. That usually means that there aren't enough men on the line of scrimmage, that, the, a scrimmage and that's an incomprehensible thing to Lou Holt right now. How could we make a mistake like that in such a critical situation? Hey, first down. It was first and ten. Now it's third and twelve. Those five-yard penalties are drive killers. Invariably. Freddie rolling and looking and fires to Carlos Spikes, who's knocked out short of the first down by Teddy Gaines. So a costly penalty will force South Carolina to kick. And John Chavis's unit turns at a stop thanks to the flag. Looks like John almost smiled there. Now, John doesn't smile a whole lot. Defensive coordinators aren't allowed to smile until after the national championship, apparently. Plus, this is one of those you don't worry too much about the stats of what your team gives up as long as you have more points than the other team in a game like this. A lot riding on this one. Tyler Dean has not had his best night. Not by a long shot. Baker surrounded. They'll mark him down at the 19 with the roll on the bounce 41-yard kick by Dean. 10-7 Tennessee in the third. 107,530 on a chilly night. We're on our way down to the 20s. And Tennessee up three from their 20. Three yards for the middle for Stevens, tackled by Jonathan Martin. And we alluded a little bit to the fourth quarter. What Tennessee's done in the fourth quarter may be unprecedented. Mainly what they do is hang on to the ball. And if they go in with a lead tonight, really tough to come back. South Carolina's defensive theory is that they don't hold up well against real big people inside, so they must come off the corners, which is exactly what happened right there with a nice play off the corner. Stevens again, getting better as the workload increases. First down, a gain of 11. Wow. Great, great lateral movement. Another great block by Fleming, 27, but watch the feet, watch the cutback ability. When he cuts back, quick cuts, and immediately he starts to get up the field then. He does not waste any time going east to north. That is a great shot of a guy picking his hole but going forward while he's doing it. That gets him over 100 for the fifth time this year. His 20th carry, he's at 101. Casey Clawson steps up, throws, drops. And Bobby Graham is the guy they think of as old reliable. He's not the fastest, he's not the biggest, but he's normally the one who catches the football when they need him to do it. He makes the key block, he does what's needed, and this time, not quite. You can see the anguish. You're, you're starting to see what Tennessee wants to do, though. Running the ball, your routes, your outside guys run the deep routes, inside guys run the crossing patterns underneath. We still haven't seen those hitches and those bubble screens that we saw earlier in the season. I'm a little surprised at that, but he still may. Second and turn. They take again. Boston Chase and sacked by John Stamper. The Gamecock sack leader has two of his team high four sacks on the year tonight in this game. Let's go down to Michelle. Well, guys, you watch Travis Stevens. He waited a long time to be the feature back at Tennessee, and Phil Fulmer continues to call the redshirt year of 1999 a blessing for Stevens because not only did he use it to get stronger and faster, but he also got to spend quality time with his late father, Leonard R. Stevens, who was battling in off over cancer, and he passed away in March of 2000. He still wears his initials on his wristband, guys. Season is dedicated to his late father. What a season it's been for him, too. 
Jackson sacked a third time. Langston more than those guys to get to him this time. This is just a flat out one on one. Scott Wells the center, Langston more the nose tackle. Bill, this would be like you and I going at each other when you were the center and I was the nose tackle. This is pretty much what would happen. But you know what? It, this is uh, being serious here for a minute. This is three guys rushing with one blitzer. Yes, the center's manned up, but he should never get beat that should quickly. Have, shouldn't he have some help? And I'm going to ignore the reference to you and me uh, with a pass rush. Colquitt Shank. Oh. Yeah, and his freshman troubles continue. General Bob Nealon is doing back somersaults in his grave. 24 yards. Don't forget, following us, they're going to the SEC West here on ESPN2. Eli Manning and Ole Miss. They're back in his home state. Rohan Davey and the LSU Tigers will be ready. 9 Eastern, 8 Central. As college football Saturday continues on ESPN2, first-year starter is rolling up some eye-popping numbers at his dad's alma mater. And he does it in the classroom just like his dad did, just like his brother did with Tennessee here and now with the Colts. Now Ken Petty and the Gamecocks take advantage. They start at the 47 of Tennessee with the end around the Corey Alexander. Who's knocked out right at the first down marker. Senior, Mooresville, North Carolina. Knocked out by Dimitri Villa. The little unseen things that you, you don't expect from a great running back. Derek Watson, great block right there. You see 22 blocking the defensive end. <laughs> Beal's checking his arm out. He, he hurt his arm. He's checking his bicep. <laughs> Ooh, that guy hit me on the you're not, Well, really, you're not used to a back blocking you. When you're a defensive lineman, you get chipped occasionally by the back, but you're really not used to them blocking you. Derek Watson with a nice seal block. And there are a lot of tail block, uh, tailbacks that simply can't do run blocking. They can pick up a blitz or two, but Watson versatile there. Remember, though, what Lou Holtz said about Watson last year. As talented a running back as he has ever coached, the question was if he would reduce his off-the-field problems. He said, this is a guy who will either star in NFL stadiums or sweep them out. Yeah. Yes, he said exactly that. And I think Derek has tested the system a few times, and because of Coach Holtz's consistency, and the fact that he nails him every time, he's given the young man a chance to realize his dreams. We all need that at one time or another. And, and he, you know, talking about Lou Holtz saying playing in the NFL, it's a guy that can do it out of the backfield. He has 17 receptions. And on kickoff returns this year, he's averaged 32 yards with him. So he kind of does a little bit of everything, which I'm sure the coaches on Sunday like. Alexander just enough for the first. Finnick. Holtz had a similar back at Notre Dame, Jerome Bettis. Let's check in on undefeated Washington State, Reese Davis. Well, guys, Travis Steen is putting on a great show for you. His old former teammate, Ontario Smith, making a nice little run here for Oregon. Look at him, ball over the safety, and the Ducks are in the house, and on top of Wazoo, 7-3 in the second quarter. Preseason favorite against the preseason last place pick in the Pac-10, Washington State. At home, expected to knock off Oregon. Who that was Kevin, Kevin Rivers, I believe, going off. 78, Kevin Rivers. And he limped off earlier, replaced by C.J. Fry. And he had a room, Watson, at the 33. Well, I'll tell you, running, running wide to the short side of the field, Bernard Jackson did a fantastic job stringing it out. And that's what you want to do on a wide play, even if you don't make the tackle. String it out, string it out. Right here, this guy right here is stringing the play out. He's going to let his teammates come in and have the fun then. Takes up two blockers. That's what I was about to say. If you and I had a pass rush situation, See, I could make calls. I would have a guard that would come down and hit you in the mouth as you came off the ball. Then I would block you. But Scott Wells would have needed that help. <laughs> Got Four wides. And timeout's going to be called here by the Volunteers. They hit the clock stop with a minute 54. Big third down coming. 
we might see Will Overstreet for the first time in three games on key third downs. This would qualify. Tennessee just used its next to last timeout with a minute 54 in the third and third and six for South Carolina. Ready? Hanging that up to Brian Scott. And a flag down. He makes the catch even as Julian Battle is trying to ride him out of bounds. That is some concentration by Brian Scott, who's not been a factor yet tonight. Well, did they, first off, I don't think they gave him the catch in bounds. They did not. But they do throw the flag on Battle. We have seen big plays time and again from the big play guys in this big game. Derek Watson, here's the call. Look at Scott go up and catch that football. He did this against the University of Georgia in the end zone to win the game. And draws the interference here, comes down with the ball, even though he was forced out of bounds in the NFL. Most likely that would have been ruled a catch because of the difference in the rules. Right, if they think you're coming down in bounds in the NFL and getting knocked out, they'll give you the catch. In college, you must get a foot down regardless. Scott officially still only one catch, nine yards on the night, but he's responsible for first and 10 of the 18. What about draw by Petty? Does not surprise Will Overstreet, who stays in to make the stop. And you could just tell from talking to the Tennessee players, Mike, how they feel about Will. Hey, we talked to Dominic Stevens and John Henderson, and they thought if, if here's any way Overstreet can play, he is going to play up the top of the screen, does a great job on Wharton, taking him on, and then coming to the outside, not letting Penny get the corner. Best comment about Will Overstreet from Rashad Moore, who says, his battery is full of acid. <laughs> and it never stops running. Loss of two, second and 12. Runner blitz, pass inside to Matthew Thomas, all the way to the six, and it's first and goal, Carolina, 14 Mike, yards. Yeah, Mike, you've been wondering when Tennessee was going to do that. South Carolina did. South Carolina took the page from the Golic book. Great job. Quick hitch pass, quick screen. The lineman can go ahead and get downfield because the pass is going to be behind the line of scrimmage. Straight shot out. You see the lineman already down the field. So one big thing about this play, when that pass is caught behind the line, get the big guys going in front of you. Back to the full house. And Ryan Brewer carries down to the two. Knocked down there by Rashad Baker. Ryan Brewer is another guy that's a big play man that is counted on by the University of South Carolina. Came to South Carolina without being highly recruited, but was all everything in the state of Ohio, much like my big friend here, Michael Gullett, Mr. Football, and they give it to him in crunch time. Tough, tough player. See if they get this one after the quarter ends. They do not. Third quarter comes to an end with Carolina poised to take the lead. It's 10 7. Fourth quarter will begin with a second and goal from the two for a South Carolina team trying to win at Knoxville for the first time ever. And as they change into the field, they will have the advantage in fans in that right corner. But they are now headed toward the inside give, the extra effort, not quite. Coming up with six is Andrew Pinnock, all 5'11", 250 <laughs> pounds, 6% body fat, third and goal. Does remind me of Jerome Bettis. You made the comparison before, Dave. You said to me in the warm-ups, he looked like an in-shape Jerome Bettis. Well, I'll tell you, Jerome Bettis is running the ball right now for Pittsburgh, but... Pennick a little younger than Mr. Uh, Bettis. <laughs> he got him down with that. Gut check right court. here. Gut check. Here the turn again. Slam to the Lindsay yard. Albert Hainsworth. The 
This is a blocking mistake up front. Hainsworth is clean in the backfield, and yes, it was a nice play by number 92 Hainsworth, but he came through untouched because of the stunt. He's just clean as a whistle. A bad mistake. There should have been down blocking there by the whole offensive line. It was simply a bust. Actually, Cedric Williams, 76, did try and go for his legs. It was almost so low across the ground, Bill. The Hainsworth did actually a nice job of cutting inside of him. Not good enough. You've got to hit him Boy, where he right. spins. Absolutely. Right. right. He hit level. Daniel Weaver on to try and tie it up from 19 yards. But the play clock has expired. South Carolina took too long yeah. to decide what they were going to do. By the time they got the field goal unit on, they did not have time to line up and kick it, so it'll have to be a 24-yarder. Weaver, 7 out of 9 on the year. Sophomore walk-on, North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Straight on, out of the hold of Eric Henry. 10-10 game. But a disappointment nonetheless for a Gamecock offense that was a foot away from taking the lead. 13-21 to go. Seven thousand plus pretty quiet at the moment because South Carolina has pulled even. 10-10, 13-21 to play. As Joey Bowers kicks this one deep. Leonard Scott, SEC Sprint Champ, and returns out to the 30-yard line. The ESPN2 game track now, and for Tennessee. Travis Stevens is always going to be a big part of the story. He has his fifth 100-yard game of the season and the only Tennessee touchdown. South Carolina's answer, Derek Watson, number 22, showing his versatility. Great catch and stretch for the end zone. Defense holding on third down. This is where men are made in football, gang. Defensive stands like that. Gut checks. Now, can Tennessee take over total ownership of another fourth quarter? They've done it time and again with the exception of the last seconds of the Georgia game. Short game by Stevens. Notre Dame and B.C. underway. Reese Davis. And Dave, you know Bob Davey does not lose in October. The Irish on the road, trying to go over 500. Carlisle Holiday buying himself a little time. Just enough time to find Julius Jones and the Irish on top. 7-0 in the first quarter. Unbelievable number right here. It looks like a misprint. But Tennessee has been keeping the ball for all but about three minutes of every fourth quarter. Alabama had it for a minute and a half of the fourth quarter last week. Another short gain by Stevens. Speaking of Notre Dame, uh -oh. watch number 55. Oh, oh, here. Who is it? Who is it? Look at him. That wouldn't be Bob Golick, would it? No, it's it would younger not. brother Mike. Absolutely. Look at the speed. Look at the acceleration. Quick feet. Look at him. He's talking to him. Too. Oh, are you kidding me? Who was that masked man? God, that was good. <laughs> you were quick, too. Third and six, Tennessee. Lawson. They turn in Whitten. First down. Plenty more. Game tackle, finally at midfield. They think this is a star tight end in the making. High school All-America, coming off a career game and a 17-yard pickup here. A Mike Golick hero because a former defensive lineman running a square in from an X position and then running over about seven game clock. Finlayson did that earlier, 275 pounds. I love the setup. So the tight end still emerging as a weapon for the ball offense. Great fake. And that one bounced. Intended for Bobby Graham. Ten-ten game. 
here in Knoxville. South Carolina's got a great opportunity here, something they've never done. That's right, and they are tasting it just a little bit. And I think Tennessee's tensing up a little bit. What do you think, Big Well, Paul? you know, I, we'll see. Will they keep the continuation going of holding on to the ball the way they have in the fourth quarter? If, can South Carolina break that up a little bit? Second and ten for Clawson. Only 11 out of 20. 162 yards. Here's Washington with room. First down to the 37. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Well, David didn't take Boston College long to answer. They've got William Green. It's okay if you call him Will. Do not call him Willie. You can call him Gaunt. 71 yards and over 1,000 for the season. BC is tied. Notre Dame doesn't all. Holtz had uh, some memorable games. Not all of them went his way when he coached the Irish against D.C. Maybe three in particular. Not that much of you. Yeah, I don't want to talk about yeah, that. I think he did. Stevens. Close to another first down. Wooden down from behind by Rashad Faison. The spur. The Tennessee close to a first down at the 27 yard line and this is starting to look like a normal tennessee fourth quarter domination was well, that number you put up dave we didn't get a chance to give it proper emphasis but i think it is the most remarkable statistic i've seen this year keeping the ball 12 minutes plus on an average every fourth quarter they've never had it less than 10 minutes of any of their first five fourth quarters Stevens, a big reason why we only needed a couple of feet, and this will be a first down carry to the 24. Tackle there by Kenny Harney. Now, as I said, Philip Pullman's got a better and better feeling about this team. You can sense he really thinks they've got a chance to get into the championship hunt, and the key is whether or not they can answer. South Carolina goes down and scores. Great football teams that get in the championship hunt always answer with the score of their own. And they normally win the first games. 13 and 3. Fulmer's record, three points or less. Game decided. That's a sack by a blitzing Faison. Joined by Jermaine Lemon. They come heavy after Casey Clawson, and they nail him. That is the fourth sack by South Carolina. Come right here, Faison. Awful, awful attempt at a block by Travis Stevens. We talked about his running. That was not a good block attempt there at all. Faison easily going by that for his second sack of the season. That was the old fire hydrant technique. You should have turned around and yelled, look out. Yeah, you've got to keep block. your head up, Travis. Back to four, motion by Bobby Graham. Lawson dropped again by Lemon. Two in a row for Jermaine. Jermaine Lemon having a career game. He got him unofficially for four tackles, but I think uh, he's done a lot more than that. Yeah, that's going to be holding on Anthony Herrera, number 75 for Tennessee. He's played with terrific aggressiveness. He's been under control. He got the quarterback on the ground. And you tack on the holding penalty. What do you do, Bill? Here, do you decline this, or do you move him back? Make holding sure you get him out of. On the offense, tell yeah. me decline. Never mind. I think you decline it. I'm glad he. I'm glad they uh, made the decision before I had a chance to answer that question. <laughs> you, you were going to say take I was, it. I wasn't going to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> now a big part of what they've done in the fourth quarter is an amazing job picking up third downs. Five sacks officially now. They have converted 69% of their third downs in the fourth quarter over the last four games, but they haven't needed 21 yards very often. Awesome picking. Over the middle, Graham! Bobby Graham picks it up, and it's first and goal, Tennessee. 32 yards on third and 21. And the worst nightmare of the South Carolina coaches, they said it again and again, we've just given up too many long yardage situations on third down and allowed the other offense to stay on the field. The fake here freezes, like great fake, the linebackers are freezing, Graham's gonna go right behind him. Look at the linebackers up, Graham goes behind. Great throw, great throw by Cross. From the four first and goal. 
Carson Stevens behind him. And a gain of only one. Are we right back down there to Tennessee's complaint about their own performance there in what they call the orange zone. They haven't scored enough touchdowns. They want touchdowns. They don't want field goals down here as they have had, uh, as they had the last time they were down here. As Michelle said, you saw on the sideline, Casey Cross was visibly upset with Kelly Washington and the offense for them inability not to get it in the end zone. Another long Tennessee fourth quarter march. They'll play here. Stevens again left side. Flags are down. And Stevens appearing to come up just short. Uh, when it's thrown out there right away, it's either offsides. Yep, there it is. Usually on the defense, yeah, as it is here. Tennessee's been down here 16 times. They've scored 13, but only five of them touchdowns from down here. Now, that is amazing for a team that's this good. And the great emphasis of their week's practice was we want touchdowns down here. Defense in the neutral zone. All sides. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. Here's what happened last time they were down in the orange zone. Stevens. Only got this short couple of times, and it runs into his own blocker, Troy Fleming. As South Carolina had him cornered. And they said it's a three. Second and goal now. At the one. Stevens. Touchdown. bigger heart inside a 190 pound body in college football well i've been talking about travis being a great player he is a great runner he may not be the greatest blocker in the world but he sure knows how to hurdle that body into the pile and come out the other end that's the definition of a great runner a 12 play scoring mark balls adds to pat and tennessee 17 10 on Travis Stevens' second touchdown run of the night. Great job again up front, getting a little bit of movement. See the linebackers diving over the top. Travis Stevens says, okay, if you're going to dive, I'm going to go underneath. To give the Vols a 17-10 win in the fourth quarters, which they always own. We'll say it again. The Vols have owned their fourth quarters this year. 12 play, 6 minute, 13 second march to the lead. In this meeting last year, 17 points won it for Tennessee. Down to the last 26 seconds, and they finished a 16-play game-winning match for the Travis Henry touchdown in Columbia. The team may be it up again this year. Reverse, three with a handoff on the kick return to Watson. All that for not much, just the 19. Tomorrow, ABC Sports brings you final round action from the PGA Tour after three rounds. In the Buick Challenge, Joel Edwards, the leader, minus 18. One up on Davis Love III, two ahead of Neil Lancaster. And tomorrow live, 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, you can watch the wrap-up on ABC Sports. 18 under, tough course. Nice job of kickoff coverage there. Tennessee holding their lane integrity. Ted Golden made the play on the reverse coming back. Smart call by South Carolina, but it didn't work. They're 81 yards away, and if they don't march here, they may not get the ball back. That was a dangerous pass. Batted down by Gaines, intended for Matthew Thomas. Well, it was, it was clearly an appearance. Michelle. Well, Skip Holt said that you can find a hole in almost any opponent's defense, but he couldn't find a weakness in Tennessee's. He told his players, this is a game where great players need to make individual plays in order for us to win. He did not tell his players which one of them was great, but he told me he's looking toward Phil Petty, Ryan Brewer, Andrew Finnick, and Derek Watson. No surprises, Dave. Second and ten. Empty backfield, five wide. Petty, 
Running out of time, sacked by Constantine Richmond, the Germanator from Millensee, Germany. And for the first time tonight, Petty's showing a little happy feet back there, a little concern when they start pumping the ball and hopping up and down on the feet. You can see how he's moving right here. He's not really poised and going through his progression. He held the ball too long and allowed the pressure to get there. And now he's got one heck of a challenge. They come after. He gets it off. And incomplete for Brian Scott. No flag. Andre Lott, number 30, coming off the corner. Big hit on Petty. The Tennessee's domination of the third of the fourth quarter seemed to continue on defense. He got rid of this ball maybe a little sooner than he wanted to because he saw the pressure coming. Receiver wasn't even looking until the ball came away. Then he reacts for it, gets bumped a little. That's interference. I'll there tell you what, there were two clear yeah. interferences there that were not called by SEC officials. First play of the drive, there was interference. Would have been the second call on batter against Scott if they'd thrown the flag. Not much on the kick by Dean. The return by Baker sets up Tennessee at the South Carolina 40, a 13-yard return. And now Tennessee with 5.45 to try and grind away, as has been their specialty. The punting on both sides has been unbelievable tonight. It looks like a junior high game. Honest to goodness. Nobody gets any distance or height. Nope. Uh, that's not a good combination. Other than that, they've been great. <laughs> we're down to Tennessee and just sense that they know now the time to go for the kill. And they have learned how to do that. With the shocking exception, and the more you look back on it, the end of the Georgia game is harder and harder to explain. Yeah. I mean, all credit to the Bulldogs, but Stevens had a 62-yard touchdown reception. Apparently win the game for the Vols, and if they don't allow the late drive and the touchdown with five seconds to go, Tennessee is right there near the top of the BCS. Yep. Still 46 undefeated. seconds Georgia had on the clock for that drive. That's been the only last. The end of one by Stevens. Stevens again and covered quickly. And right back to the 40, third and 10 from there. South Carolina defense coming up strong here, saying we're going to try and go three and out, get our offense a chance. But that was a mistake by Stevens. One of the few times that he really missed the hole. He had a nice kick out block. Yeah, by Anthony good, Herrera. Good yeah. pull by Herrera and a kick out, and he ran outside right into the man that was clearly blocked. Big play, big play here for both teams. Back to South Carolina's bugaboo with their defense, getting people stopped on third and long. Looks like Washington, and they do get him stopped. He gets five of the ten, 35-yard line. Fourth down coming. Now, you punt here. You go for it. Oh, yeah, I think you got to punt. You got to pin him back. Don't you play field position here? Play field position here in this situation. Make them start. You hope, you hope your punter. Now, a lot of it has to do with your confidence in your punter. I know that Colquitt has really struggled. He, he's awfully young, he so... Could. You don't shake one here and get it inside the 10. Well, they, they may let the clock yeah. run down here and, and back up and have him kick from the 40, too. Lou Holtz has all three of his timeouts. Fulmer has only one. Phillips going to take the penalty and kick the ball exactly as you said, Michael. Uh, who? Excuse me? Oh, kick the ball, but Dave is Are you exactly David? right. Are you Dave? Thank you. Did you say that? Dave did, yeah. Hey, I try to give Gullick credit I know. sometime. You I, know, I, I'm, if there's something really intelligent to say, I try to attribute it to Mike, <laughs> and I thought you were mature enough to handle it. Dave, you got to give him a 20 like I do. <laughs> well, play clock expires, 3.35 to go. I wonder what this discussion I is. I don't know what you have to talk about. <laughs> they had to have a long discussion on the end of the third quarter. Well, I'm, I, 
You really hate to see the officials figure in big games like this, but there have been some really errant calls tonight, especially in the pass interference area and in the big catch in the first half. Well, whatever this is, they feel they've got to take it to Holtz. Well, hopefully Harold Mitchell, the referee, will explain it to us. Uh-oh. Oh, oh uh -oh. boy. Oh, boy. Please set the clock at 352. 352. Oh, we ought to be happy about that. Should be. I would think yeah. uh, Coach Holtz would like well, that. This man would not be now, happy about Phillip that. Philip is going to go down and pitch his fit now. Throw your hat, Philip. Maybe it'll work for you, too. I mean, a hat throw for 17 seconds. Seven, yeah, right. Hey, 17 seconds. And it was a it was a pretty effective throw. Looked like the Mary Tyler Moore throw, maybe of the video <laughs> show. <laughs> threw it up. He <laughs> didn't get the clip. <laughs> Seth Reagan and not Dustin Colquitt is on the front for Tennessee. And we got both head coaches <laughs> exercised now. <laughs> On what wow. looked like such an innocuous delay of game penalty. Whatever that means, Dave, you're right. Yeah. Well, we've been ready. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dave Barnett, folks, that said that. That was clever. Now what's going to happen is... Oh, boy. Yeah, because the, the clock was now going to run, and they were going to let 25 yes. seconds run out, yes. run off, so South Carolina called the timeout. So they've got two left. <laughs> 3.48 to go when we come back to Knoxville. We now know why Lou Holt was so upset, even though they added time to the clock. That's right. His declining of the penalty benefited his team, therefore... They would start the clock on the ready for play, forcing South Carolina to use a timeout. Coach Hurst didn't like that. Now here comes the high kick by Reagan, and it is fielded at the five oh. by Ryan Brewer, and now South Carolina will have to go 95 yards with three minutes and 38 seconds. You put a veteran player on the 10-yard line, you put his heels on the 10, and you say, son, if the ball goes over your head, let it go. Ryan Brewer, of all times, to drop back to the five, and Coach Holtz is speaking to him at this moment, a terrible mistake. Yeah. 15 yards of field position, most likely, cost to South Carolina. Ryan usually makes big plays and does the right thing. This time, not so. And Lou was talking to him right before the punch, before Ryan ran out. And I'm amazed Ryan made that mistake. Will Overstreet in the game for Tennessee. Slated for Scott Beauty. He's seen a lot here in the second half. Petty. Play fake, throwing incomplete out of his own end zone. What about that call? Two fakes, and they're just about on him for a safety when he finally ends the facade and gets rid of it. Well, I like the call because if you're trying to win the football game, and yes, there's a big risk. You take the risk and take a chance, hoping you can get a huge, huge play. Didn't work, but I like the call. Second and ten. Four wides. Again, out of his own end zone. Screen, Watson with blockers. And very nimbly down the left side. Does not get the ball out of bounds, but he gets a first down to the 19. Upended there by Rashad Baker. We're seeing two running backs, Travis Stevens and Derek Watson, really use their feet well, Bill. I mean, able to really go sideways to set up their gaining yards and keeping their balance been incredible yeah he gets quick movement laterally forces the missed tackle and back up the field like lightning now inside good there all over Hainsworth and eddie moore leading the tennessee serve 
You spread them out, and it seems like such a good idea to hand the ball off on a draw, especially to a back like Watson, but nothing doing this time. Lindworth jogging off. Little applause on the Tennessee side. Loss of one for Watson. Second and 11. Here they come. Corner blitz. Zip. Complete. And what a hit immediately applied by Kevin Burnett on the Carlos Spikes. Turns into just a game of about four. Third and six coming here. South Carolina is not known to be a vertical passing game, but they're going to have to get vertical with the time being what it is. They're going to get bigger games. the 42-yard line. But folks, that's a big play guy making a big play in a big game. That's so hard. Good gracious. Petty showing the guts and the focus to step up and take the shot. He knows it's coming from Jabari Greer. Perfect throw. Well, you are not kidding. And, and the Scott knows exactly the blitz is coming to cut the route off. Get the slant in. 19 yards, only his second catch. How big it was, though. First down, Petty now all day, and that one thrown in Scott's general direction. Really thrown away. Yeah, and the offensive line that time picked up the stunts and blitzes extremely well. Petty had plenty of time, but nice coverage by the Tennessee secondary. And that was what you'd call a coverage throwaway. Yeah, and, and you're right too, Bill. South Carolina not really a vertical passing team. And that's exactly what they're going to Now, they do have time with a couple of timeouts left to not have to go too deep all the time, but they got to get it down there. Since his error fielding that cut, Ryan Brewer has stayed on the bench. Starting receiver not in, even with four wides. Second and ten, Petty. This is also overthrown, and Matthew Thomas had some space out there. Third and ten. Lou and Skip earlier. I Dad was a little bit upset. That was after the run. That was after the run. Lou was not happy with that call. The Skip said he's fired me several times. I said, yeah, but you can always go to mom. He said, I think mom's more interested in the grandchildren. He will not be firing young Skip. Two smart guys. Here's third and ten. Corner blitz again. Ball is oh, going yeah. to be beat, and interference will be called again on the pattern run by Brian Scott. You need to call that one interference, holding. You can pick your one on that one because he did everything to him. You just wonder why DBs sometimes do those things. I guess they assume they're beat. Yeah, I, I think they on the defense, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. On Teddy Gaines. Teddy Gaines, number 12. He's in pretty good shape here. He's got free safety help. So why do you latch on, grab the guy's shoulder, and then trip him up? Maybe yeah. he didn't mean to. But that was man free. He's playing outside leverage. He knows he's got help in the middle of the field. And he gives the offense new life inside Tennessee territory. Plenty of time. Still with two timeouts. 125 to go. Switch three. Matthew Thomas. Looks up about five or six out of the 37. Ainsworth and Andre Lott bringing him down there. And the second timeout called by the Gamecocks here with a minute 14. Boy, we thought this might be special. It has absolutely It's special. absolutely special, and South Carolina has bitten into the Tennessee domination of fourth quarter, coming off their five-yard line and taking it deep into Tennessee territory. Coming up next here on ESPN2, Eli Manning at Ole Miss. Back in his home state of Louisiana, roaring crowd waiting at Tiger Stadium as LSU will host the Mississippi Rebels 9 Eastern. Coming up as college football Saturday continues from one big one of the SEC East to one 
big one in the SEC West. The winner of this one, by virtue of Florida's defeat of Georgia, now two conference losses for the Bulldogs, winner here in control of the East, although they do still both have to play the Gators. And Petty has it four for 33 yards on this drive, but the big play clearly the pass interference call against Petty Gaines. Now from the 38th, second and five. Still no Ryan Brewer. Watson out as a slot receiver. One of five for Petty to choose from. Deep up the right side and just overthrown. Intended for Carlos Spikes. Andre Lott, good coverage there. I don't know, Bill. I know you're trying to get in the end zone. Maybe you're trying to catch him napping a little bit. I don't think Tennessee's defense is going to be napping right now, but you have time. You have the timeout and kind of going for it all there. Going for it all, and usually that's because of a specific matchup. You think your guy can beat that guy, and if you get that, that's what you instruct your quarterback to do. So they felt like, maybe they felt like that Scott could beat Lott, and that's why they went for it. third and five here and complete from behind Watson and we're down to last gasp time for the game cards real football wisdom and I think it was Bill Walsh that said it in normal situations you think plays in tight situations game winning situations you think players so they've tried to go to Scott they've tried to go to Watson the last two plays well, now surprising now we see usually on the fourth and five sometimes you try and get the quarterback on the corner so he has the option to throw a run we'll see if they do that or if he stays in the pocket wouldn't be surprised if he kept this play Scott and Watson are wide right fourth and five for Petty over the middle, incomplete, but a marker is down, and they may have lost Petty. We'll see. Petty dropped after he got rid of it. It was incomplete. Now we'll wait for the indication from Harold Mitchell. Might be holding the way the Gamecocks are yep. marching off the field, and it is. stop by the defense or so even if it was caught they had to do it over again you get that push right up the middle from the big guys offensive linemen have to hold as they did would be the game and the Tennessee players are going to give credit to their conditioning program the coaches got them in shape might need a little practice on their running out of the clock <laughs> <laughs> this will be the last timeout. South Carolina, that's their last one. Center stepped on Clawson's foot, and Clawson darn near tore a medial collateral going backwards. Well, that's what you want. You're always worried about those last plays, the ball getting downfield, but no worries if your pass rush can get there. Again, I know he got the pass off, but with the holding, it would have had to come back again. Nothing beats a good pass rush, huh, Bill? When you can get in that quarterback's face. Well, you're really right. I mean, the, the offensive linemen are really at the mercy of the big, fast people, and we tease about it, but it's a tough situation, and, and, a, and a good defense ought to be able to rush the passer when they know what's coming. Well, you, you alluded to it, and if there is an unsung hero for Tennessee, it has got to be Johnny Long, their strength coach, a.k.a. General Pat. General Pat. Yes, doubled right. up on their off-season running. Yep. yep. That is what every player points to as the biggest reason for their fourth quarter domination. When you bring year. him up, they roll their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the results speak for themselves. They've held the ball 8 minutes, 24 seconds of this fourth quarter. And now South Carolina cannot stop the clock. So Tennessee will improve to 4-1 and one of the SEC, 5-1 and one overall. The Gators await December 1st. They're also 4-1 and one after knocking off Georgia today. And the second conference loss for South Carolina in every year since they went to the divisions in 92 in the East. That has meant elimination. Nobody's won the East with more than one loss, although plenty have won the West with at least two losses.
Robert, big home win for Phil Fulmer. And the family tradition continues. His daughters take turns making that walk out to midfield after every home game. He is still perfect against South Carolina. And they win this one 17 to 10 in Knoxville. For Mike Golick, Bill Curry and Michelle Tafoya. Dave Barnett, reminder, college game day scoreboard coming up next. This has been a presentation.